Welcome to my shop, weary traveler. May I interest you in Ein Yerboa? Or perhaps El Yerbo? Or maybe a video expounding upon the supremacy of a Jaboa woman. You'll take all three. Wonderful. Make sure to treat them well. Hello, welcome back to The Thing. I'm coming to you after HG attempted to fruitlessly replace Dorothy with this Polish hussy and her wildly mid-drip, as well as introducing a boss utilizing their patented low-interaction gameplay, as he spams invisibility and stunning because HG have run out of ideas. Although I suppose this was clever foreshadowing to some of their recent designs. Now I am a known neural hater. No, probably THE known neural hater, at least by those who saw my like, 10 worst characters list. I think having Neural as a main protagonist is about as fun and exciting as a Molten Lava enema. But why? Why is Dorothy, in her own right, a very good girl, peak cinema, the cutest little thing that I'd let stomp my skull in for the sake of her dream, the best HG has ever done on a character, while Neural is an evil virus of Satan? Well, I'm going to briefly cover the way the narrative treats them and their actions to show why I love one and have just sent the other off to the glue factory. This video also serves as something to point to for all the people who tell me my opinions on Neural are wrong by stating things that I've never said as my arguments, which happens shockingly often. Now then, let's take a look at the black sheep. Don't hold my hand this the story of Arknights glazes Neural more than terminally online weebs glaze Japanese voice acting. Everything she does is treated with a grandiose, please clap, this is really cool, energy. Jumps back in to save Maria, clap. Gets a quarter pounder with cheese at McDonald's, clap. Beats a homeless man to death in the street, clap. He was probably actually an evil corpo in disguise. There is never even a moment where it feels like anything Neural does is in doubt. When she's engaging in a slam poetry battle with Viviana, when Weenar tells her just because she thinks she's helping doesn't mean she is. Every other fight or conflict, we know she'll succeed. They almost create tension with the Tola segment, but I mean, this is HG's precious baby girl versus a delusional homeless man screaming about his Kagan quest. Now as cool as you look, Tola, you don't have big titties or sell an altar. So you're gonna take a draw, a loss, and then get sent away. Now how does Neural get characterized? She is perfectly good, the ultimate moral paragon, and she doesn't need to take any actions that harm anyone who isn't shown as immediately bad. Her character is so mind-numbingly simple and good, it makes the average Mihoyo character look complicated in comparison. How about all the other characters she interacts with? How do they view her? Well you see, they follow this very simple flowchart I made. You see, the question is, do they like Neural? If so, good. They're on the nice list. They get their good boy points and hugs and kisses from their pookie. If they don't like Neural, EW! What the fuck? How could you ever hate Neural? You must be simply the most evil person to ever exist! Mods! Inflate their skull with battery acid, then toss them into the disease-riddled hellscape known simply as... The McDonald's Ball Pit. Now before I go any further, you may be seeing the way this is trending. This is because I have some allegations for Neural. Allegations that I don't believe she can beat. What are these allegations? Neural is a Mary Sue. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. The term's overused. People just use it for characters they don't like. You get no bitches. All of these things are true, sure, but I do still believe she is. Let's go back through all we've talked about and visualize it a little bit. Not to pull a Danganronpa and flashback to something from two minutes ago, but here we go. The narrative itself dick rides Neural harder than Elon Musk dick rides, well, Elon Musk. The only time we've ever seen her technically lose is against Tallulah at the very start of the game where she didn't even have to like fight her, aced it, and died in her place. Besides that, Neural has done the reverse sarcasm. Instead of losing every conflict, triumphs over every obstacle. She is the perfect paladin of righteousness. 
the people, and garlic bread, surprisingly, who is never forced to make tough choices or face moral dilemmas. No trolley problems, no killing two innocents to save ten, not even running late for a date because you want to pick up some flowers at the store, but someone left a cart in a parking spot like three places away from the cart return thing, and like, it's not your fault or your problem, but it would only be like a few seconds, so you should just do it, you know? None of those. Everyone who is good, who we're supposed to really like, are all pro neural and the characters that we're supposed to think are bad, are not. Except for maybe Tola. He isn't really shown to be bad per se, more like in need of a therapist, life coach, something. The way the world and characters themselves warp around her is immersion breaking, and there's no better example than the end of the Kashmir's Major in Near Light. They had it. It was right there. A chance to make her an actual character, human. The fact that she was never infected gets exposed. The common man turns on her, and she has to realize that they don't know all the ins and outs of her story, and life is sometimes unfair, and you can't win them all. Sometimes people will turn on you, or not like you, by no fault of your own, really, or through some past mistake. Roll credits, absolute cinema, Skibbity Toilet Movie is back on the table, and crowds party in the streets. Instead, like... Three people in the crowd are mad. She brings Blood Boy to the Hall of Champions or whatever, as he immediately begins to respect her, going back to the previous point. The good guys unite to help her get there, and that's how it ends. It's more disappointing than Deion Sanders' stint in Colorado. Or for non-Americans, uh, more disappointing than, I don't know, bad cheese? Whatever you fucking barbarians do in your spare time. And one more final flaw that her Mary Sue character creates other characters don't get to develop or be important because of her. Viviana is a little girl at heart, trapped in delusions about what people should be. She likes Neural because she sees her as a perfect fairy tale hero. I except that's actually what she is. Mwinar is a dickhead because he's seen the cruelty of the world. Apparently, he just got unlucky he wasn't a Neural sister as his wisdom is ignored and promptly forgotten. Maria could have had just one sentence with some kind of disappointment or maybe resentment after putting in her blood, sweat, and tears to live up to her family name, only to have to cede the spotlight immediately upon Margaret coming back. Lastly, why is no one in Pina Silvestris at least molding a little that one of the champions of the infected, from their perspective, used their condition to run away when things got tough? came back and still wore their condition that has left them in poverty and misery for years, wasn't actually infected. Just Ed Ed and fucking Eddie in the arena are the only ones peeved. Neural is not only a terribly written character, in my opinion, but she actively degrades the other characters in Near Light, in my opinion. After all of this, I want to cool off. So let's look at Dorothy before we circle back and conclude. Dorothy is my favorite character. I've made that, uh, clear. From humble origins of jumping around in the sands as a poor pioneer to overcoming the odds through the power of talent, hard work, and more ethically dubious experiments than Deshaun Watson has sexual assault lawsuits. Now, the story actually demonizes Dorothy in her own event at times, arguably unfairly, but I would say in a way that actually really makes her shine. She is introduced as happy sweet little Dorothy, but then we hear Sunny describe her like she's some ancient evil unleashed from the formerly sealed tomb of Galaknash. If you've ever heard the phrase, never forget where you came from, Dorothy embodies it to a T. And not like those politicians who come back home every five years to give a speech about how much they care about the place, despite, you know, never doing anything to actually help. Her life's work is all about providing a better life to those who, like her family and community, are pioneers or stuck in a shitty situation. Her goals are nothing but noble, using her skills to work for those who just simply weren't as lucky. Now here, people will see similarities between Neural and Dorothy, but there's just one teensy weensy little difference. Dorothy actually has flaws! She's a dreamer to both her benefit and detriment. She doesn't see what she's doing as 
trapping people in the metaverse where their souls can be minted on the blockchain. She sees it as helping a guy see his son again, or giving this woman a way to avoid being fired, drowning her sorrows in alcohol, and taking her cyber truck out in the rain, where it will within five minutes rust to the point of collapse. She is blind to the problem initially, then tries to rationalize it as a necessary step in the process of saving everyone, until she ends up going into the simulation to stop the cum demon. No, not that cum demon, that cum demon. Now even after all that, she doesn't give up. As her banner states, the answer lies in the next attempt. The savior complex waits for no one, and if tough choices need to be made, or necessary evils must be engaged with, Dorothy will be there roinging her Gus. Now before I get too out of hand with this trailer to my 30 minute video essay of Jerboa propaganda, which will inevitably become a real video at some point, let's hit the points that were hit with Neural and see how Dorothy compares. As previously stated, the narrative treats Dorothy as a villain. She is shown to be both brilliant and misguided, which is maybe best shown by her getting a prison appointment with Mr. Country Rhodes. Dorothy fails spectacularly, but gets back in the saddle. She doesn't let the world's indifferent cruelty break her indomitable roingish spirit. Similar excellent morals to Neural, but a dreamer who is willing to do crazy ass shit to actually try and help people. Whereas Neural stops dreaming and philosophizing to immediately become pragmatic when necessary. The main doers of good in the story are all against Dorothy. The underdesk cylinder cleaner, Silence, Sunny, and Astony are all against Dorothy and go hard on her. Like they are 100% trying to cancel my girl, but it's okay, because I've created a story about Silence being a groomer, so we'll see who cancels who. Bringing us to the final two things, the story is better with Dorothy's inclusion. Her struggle is real and meaningful. Her third trust line is probably my favorite voice line in the whole game. There's a whole story being told there to unpack by itself. Imagine giving your everything, your time, blood, sweat, and tears for others, only for them to abandon you. For them to not understand that everything you did for years was for people like them, but after one bad outcome, they never want to see you again. It's a genuinely humbling thought. As for her effect on other characters, she's the reason Silence gets her development kickstarted into Lone Trail which is switching from glasses to contact lenses. She is why Astrony changes throughout the story. She is the vehicle that Sunny develops through, and her failure is what leads motherfucking Ferdinand Clooney to have the greatest event to event comeback, where he beats all the villain of the week allegations and becomes one of the best NPCs Arknights has ever had. All this comes directly through one silly little science rat. To bring all of this to its conclusion, what exactly is it that HG missed so badly with Neural that they hit with Dorothy? Clearly it's that they didn't like and subscribe. But for real, it's a touch of humanity. It feels like someone liked Neural a bit too much in the writer's room. Flaws, other good characters having problems with your character, failure, these things can be hard to write into characters that you don't like. You don't want them to be a failure. However, these things are what truly makes a character a success. Neural can't just spend her whole life rolling nat 20s. So let this be a reminder of a lesson that another video of mine had. I forget which thanks to my early onset dementia, but here we go. It's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to not be attractive to everyone, to not be the strongest or the best all the time. Because honestly, that shit would get boring fast. If you're always at the pinnacle, you never have any journey, you never get to actually improve, you never get to fail. So focus on that. You're already all you need to be, but far from all you can be. There's greatness in you. You just have to keep trying to find it. Now if you're all properly motivated, I'm off to go reread every single Arknights event. Pray for my sanity. In my quest to review the over a million words of Total Arknights story. May God forgive my transgression.